Hello everyone, and welcome to the Dark Fanfix, so we are back with an interesting movie on what if Naruto was Rise of the King with power of Primordial God. But before we start, I just want to remind you to please subscribe to my channel and hit the like button if you enjoy my content. Let's start the story. Oi Teme, did you feel that? Asked Naruto. For some reason ever since he arrived in this sub-dimension, Naruto felt that his thought process had become much clearer and his mind could process things faster than usual. With this newfound intellect, he deduced that the assimilation of Asura had him absorbing the centuries of knowledge and battle instincts that belonged to the man. With the powers that he had inherited from Asura, as well as the powers Sasuke inherited from Indra, the duo was finally able to create some breathing space in their battle against Madara. Unfortunately their battle had dragged on too long, allowing the Shinju to reach the final stage of its blooming cycle. With the fully bloomed bud of the Shinju staring straight up into the night sky, the Uchiha ancestor enacted his infinite Tsukuyomi plan and succeeded in entrapping the entirety of the elemental nations within his unbreakable illusionary world. Fortunately with Sasuke's quick thinking deployment of his Suzano along with the power of his awakened Rinnegan, he managed to shield Team 7 from the effects of the infinite Tsukuyomi. However, they could not exit the Suzano without running the risk of succumbing to the powerful illusion themselves. Not to mention that Madara encased every human within the elemental nations inside cocoons created from his, Shin. Jukai Kudan, God. Nativity of a world of trees. And planned to sap them of their chakra. In another stroke of luck, the moon was obscured by a large passing cloud, thus granting them a chance to counterattack as they could not be trapped by the infinite Tsukuyomi during this period. However before they could even pick up from where they left off, something unexpected occurred right before their very eyes. Madara was impaled through the heart from behind, the culprit being none other than Black Zetsu with his arm as the spear. In the revelation of the century, Black Zetsu explained that he was not actually the will of Madara but the will of Kagaya. As Black Zetsu slowly slipped off Obito and onto Madara, the chakra that was being absorbed by the Shin, Jukai Kudan emerged from the surrounding environment and collated inside the expanding body of Madara. Although, Naruto gestured for Sasuke to stop the transformation. Their actions proved futile as they were trapped in the grasps of several tendrils. Trapped, they could only watch in horror as the rapidly expanding Madara suddenly shrunk into the familiar form of Otsutsuki Kagaya. Utilizing her godlike powers over chakra, she transported them into a sub dimension in the form of a cavern filled with boiling lava. Sasuke had quickly run through the hand seals for the Kachiyose no Jutsu, summoning technique, and summoned a large hawk for them to land on. Naruto, Seeing the hawk struggling under the combined weight of so many people, made a quick rosin shuriken and tossed it into the walls of the cavern. Kakashi, holding onto both Sakura and Obito, leapt into the newly created crevice in the wall so that the hawk could maneuver better. Without having to worry about them, Naruto and Sasuke went all out against their spiritual grandmother without holding anything back. Yet for everything they threw at her, she countered with ease and returned twofold. Such was the power of the original wielder of chakra. In a desperate combination attack by Naruto and Sasuke, a large cloud of dust was kicked up from the explosion when Kagaya had attempted to block it. No, I didn't feel anything out of ordinary, Dobi. What did you feel? asked a confused Sasuke. I feel like someone is reading my mind, replied Naruto. Naruto, you should come here, said Kayubi. Her voice had an angry tone in it. Naruto quickly went in his mindscape. When he arrived there he was shocked to the core. His usual mindscape was replaced by a large hall made up of black stones. Kayubi quickly moved to him glaring at something on the other side of the hall. His eyes quickly found the cause of her anger. There was a person sitting on the other side of the hall on a giant throne. The unknown man was wearing a black cloak and a hood, so Naruto couldn't identify him, but he still felt that there was a connection between himself and this man and that he could trust this unknown man. His body tensed and he prepared to fight this unknown man who had changed his mindscape. There is no need to be tense, I am not here to fight, said the man in a calm manner. Who are you? What do you want? asked a confused Naruto. My name is Chaos, and I am here to talk to you Naruto, told now newly named Chaos. Naruto's body relaxed after few moments, seeing no threatening motions from the hooded man. Why should I listen? If you didn't know. I am in middle of a fight, asked Naruto. We are talking in our joint mindscape, 
Time doesn't matters here. Trust me, it's important that you talk with me, and I can defeat Kagaya after we discuss some things. Replied Chaos in a calm voice. Both Naruto and Kayubi's eyes widened after hearing this, and the tone in which the man talked about it had no arrogance, only confidence in it. Very well, what do you want to talk about? Questioned Naruto. A couch materialized in front of the man. Naruto quickly went to sit on it, while Kayubi stood behind him looking at chaos for any threatening action. I am going to give you a small history lesson, there are a lot of dimensions or you can call it worlds. Every dimension is separated from the others by a stretch of nothingness called a dimensional gap. This dimension, which is called elemental nations, is very close to another dimension that is named Earth. Every dimension has primordial gods in it to guard or take care of the dimensions. The primordial god in the elemental nation is Shinju, while I am the primordial god of Earth. The dimensional gap is very thin at some points so I was able to cross it and meet Shinju a long time ago. We started a rivalry to remove our boredom. I used to come to this dimension and fight against him and take a rest from my regular duties. Shinju was unable to breach the dimensional gap for an unknown reason. In our last sparring match things spiraled out of control and we started trying to kill each other even if it's impossible for a primordial to die. In the spar I destroyed his physical body but I was also very injured. When I returned to my home, I was stabbed in the back by one of my subordinates while others distracted me. Normally I would have healed from the wound in a matter of seconds but somehow Shinju had come in contact with them and gave them that sword. It was soaked in his blood along with the blood of a few other minor gods and my subordinates. I was not able to heal from the wound properly and lost consciousness. When I woke up again, I found they have sealed most of my powers and sealed me in a pocket in dimensional gap. I was unable to find a way to break the seal. After a lot of time I was visited by Shinigami and we devised a plan to permanently seal Shinju and gain some of his power. Through a ritual I separated some of my soul and gave it to Shinigami. Our plan was very simple, Shinigami will replace the soul of a child with powerful parents with mine and after his death I would gain the ability to use chakra and I should be able to come to this dimension. But something unexpected happened today. I started sensing my soul very near to my location and I came to investigate. Ended chaos, looking pointedly at Naruto. You are a part of Shinju, aren't you? The anger and hate you are feeling towards me is part of the hatred of Shinju. So, control yourself. Said chaos to Kayubi. Ku Chan, please calm yourself, said Naruto in a soothing voice while rubbing her back. No, don't you understand? He is here to absorb you. Let me kill him, roared Kayubi. She started thrashing against his hold on her. I know, said Naruto. Hearing this, Kayubi stopped thrashing and looked in his eyes. His usual bright blue eyes were full of sadness and determination. She knew that once he became determined to do something, it was impossible to stop him. Both stood up and turned towards chaos. If you wish to absorb me, then I will not resist it, isn't it the same thing I have done to thousands of shadow clones? But I want to achieve my dream first. Please let me bring peace to the elemental nations. Pleaded Naruto. Kayubi, who was standing near him, started tearing up. Chaos just kept looking at him, the hood on his face hiding any expression. When I felt my soul fragment and I came here to investigate, I had no intention of absorbing you. Even if you were on the equal strength of Shinju, I would have left you alone after a visit unless you somehow became an immortal. Humans have very small lives, and I have been sealed for a very long time. So I could always wait for a few more decades. But after seeing your memories, I decided that I will absorb you, said Chaos. Why? If you have seen my memories, then you know that I would like to bring peace to the world and become Hokage. Asked Naruto in pleading tone. Kayubi on the other hand realized why Chaos wanted to absorb Naruto and looked at him in pity and shame. Do you really want to know? You are a part of me, so I won't lie to you. Said Chaos. Kayubi was looking at Chaos with a pleading face to stop him from telling Naruto. Naruto quickly came to conclusion that he wouldn't like whatever Chaos would tell him a single bit, but he decided that he should at least know why Chaos decided to absorb him. Yes, I want to know, said Naruto. Chaos, after hearing this response, just sighed. Very well, come with me. Chaos stood from his throne and walked towards a gate that has formed on the wall. Naruto and Kayubi followed him and passed through the door. They found themselves in the mindscape of Naruto, 
After passing through a few turns in the sewer, they came across a wall that had four seals on it. Chaos turned towards Naruto. You have studied and became a master of Fuinjutsu after death of Jiraiya, haven't you Naruto? Tell me, what are these seals for? Asked Chaos. Kayubi, after seeing those seals, had tears in her eyes and was glaring at Chaos. Naruto moved towards the seals to study them. When he was out of the earshot, Kayubi turned towards Chaos and said, Why did you show him those damn seals? You could have just absorbed him without giving him extra pain. Didn't you see how much he has suffered? Please control yourself. Don't let Shinju's hatred influence you. Yes, I could have absorbed him, but I think he should know. No one told him important things about his own life. Yes, even you Kayubi. You never told him about his parents, these seals, and a lot of other things he deserved to know. I want to be completely honest with him and tell him everything he wants to know. Retorted Chaos, Kayubi just bowed her head in shame after hearing him. She had tears flowing from her eyes and was cursing herself in her mind. After a few minutes, Naruto came back from studying it. Chaos turned towards him and asked, What did you find about those seals? Naruto took a calm breath and said, First seal is to stop a person from finding this place. Since this is my mindscape that person would be me. That seal is the reason I have not been able to find those seals before. The second seal is more complex and its function is to make me trust and adapt to the ideals and thought process. The person who has applied chakra on the seal from outside wanted me to. The third seal is to destroy certain thoughts or ignore the logical solution about something. The fourth seal is to stop Kayubi's chakra from affecting those seals. Naruto turned towards Kayubi and asked a question that has been in his mind since he started studying those seals, did you know about these seals? Kayubi just nodded her head not meeting her eyes with Naruto's due to shame, she could feel Naruto shaking due to her answer. Chaos, seeing that Naruto would break down any moment, put his hand on Naruto's shoulder and said in a calm voice, calm down. You need to be strong enough to hear the rest of things that I want to tell you. Naruto took a deep breath and nodded. All of them returned to the main hall and Chaos sat on his throne while Naruto sat on the couch once again. Hiruzen Serutobi was a very sly and cunning man. According to me, and I am very, very sure that I am right, he devised a plan to make you loyal to Konoha and acted on it. The first step of the plan was to make sure that he was the only light in the darkness. He turned the whole village against you then he started to help you. He quickly found out that you think you are better than everyone else. I think you got that part from me. He brainwashed you to forgive every villager because you are better than them. Then the second step of the plan was to make sure you didn't resent Konoha. Loyalty seals would have been ideal solution, but had a higher risk of being found out. So he placed a special seal to destroy any thoughts that would make you angry at Konoha. Then he started the last and final step of the plan. For you to show them that you were better than everyone else. To show them that you decided that becoming Hokage would be best choice. And boom, here you are, ready to die for Konoha. The same Konoha that never gave you anything that wasn't already yours by right. Naruto was thinking about different times when he had interacted with the old man and he could see a pattern there. After every beating he received from mobs, old man used to tell him that he should forgive them because, they don't know better, or, you are better than them. When he started to dream about becoming Hokage, old man used to tell him that once he become Hokage everyone will respect him or they will finally acknowledge him as their better. He cursed the old man and turned towards Chaos and nodded to him to continue. Kayubi just remained silent as she had also came to the same conclusion a long time ago but couldn't tell the Naruto in fear that he would not believe her and there was a good chance of him not believing about it as those damn seals were active. Now that Chaos was here and has neutralized those seals with his power, Naruto was finding it easier to believe about it. The seal was used a second time by your sensei, Kakashi Hitaki. The only thing he taught you was tree climbing technique and teamwork. He programmed you to think that those who break the rules of the ninja world are trash, those who abandon their comrades are worse than trash. That's why you spent your previous years chasing after a ninja who tried to kill you. The final time, the seal was used by your godfather, Jiraiya. He once again, programmed, you to bring world peace. So, you see a pattern Naruto. These people used you your whole life. Are you with me? Questioned Chaos in a very calm voice, but one could hear the suppressed fury in his voice. 
Naruto was now starting to understand why he wanted to absorb him. Hell, he would probably commit suicide as soon as he could. But he will hear everything, for the first time in his life someone was telling him everything without any hidden motives. He was sure if he asked Chaos about anything he would tell him the truth. He turned towards Chaos and replied in a hollow voice, yes, as good as one can possibly be after hearing that his life and his dream are not his own. I know. These people played with your thoughts and dream and never understood what they were doing completely. You don't understand your own actions completely. Let's take Obito Uchiha for example. If the war is over and he survived, what would you do? Asked Naruto. I would ask for him to be pardoned of his past crimes, replied Naruto. See Naruto, that's what Serutobi did to you. What about thousands of people who died in Kirigakure due to him? What about people the people who died in Konoha during Kayubi's rampage? There is no asking Naruto, had I not arrived, you would have been a hero of war. People would have done whatever you asked them. By giving him pardon, you were distributing the message that any person could kill thousands then ask for pardon and he or she will be pardoned. You would have asked for pardon of a man who killed thousands in the name of a girl who he loved and he wanted to be with her in an illusion world. Think about it, retorted Chaos. Naruto, on the other hand, had his head down due to shame. Without the seals interfering with his thoughts, he could see that he would have done a lot of foolish things. He decided that he will ask one final question before merging with Chaos. Chaos was very old so he should know about peace. Do. Do you think I would have fulfilled my dreams? Asked Naruto. He really wished that even if they were not his original dreams, he fulfilled them because he spent majority of his life chasing after them. Chaos looked at him for a few seconds then replied, Yes, you would have fulfilled one dream, at least for a short time. Naruto's eyes widened after hearing this and quickly asked, Which one? After so much depressing news he had very little hope of fulfilling his dreams. He was feeling a lot better now. Everything that happened was in the past. Now, he didn't want to live anymore but more than that he wanted to feel some emotions and be free of any responsibilities. He decided that even if he was dispelled or absorbed his soul would be in a body that would never be controlled. His soul would finally be free. He wanted to laugh, but he was very sure that both Ku Chan and Chaos would think he was mad, so he decided against it. You would have been able to bring peace for a while, but then they would have started wars again. You wanted to bring peace, when you have never seen peace yourself. All the villages were in a cold war with other villages. To bring peace you have to know both the light and darkness of the world. You spent so much time in darkness during your childhood that all you want to see is the light in others. Hell, you have never killed anyone in your life as ninja due to the fear of becoming a monster or a demon. The hard truth is this is a world of ninjas, and as long as there are different groups and villages there will always be wars unless everyone feels threatened by the same thing and they know that they won't be able to beat it. As for your other dream, I am very sure that Tsunade would have made Kakashi the next Hokage. And you would have once again asked for Sasuke's pardon. Then the villagers would have once again started that, Uchiha-sama, crap. A few well-placed words from your haters and lo, and behold, you are once again the village pariah. And I am pretty sure that Kakashi would have chosen Sasuke over you for the next Hokage, replied Chaos. Naruto didn't even bat an eyelash about not being chosen as Kakashi's successor. He stood up from his chair and moved towards Kayubi, who was sitting on a chair in a corner. He placed a finger below her chin and lifted her head up. He frowned when he saw that her eyes were red and puffy from crying. He pressed his lips to hers. Her eyes widened when she felt this and she quickly returned the kiss. But before she could do anything more he pulled back. He pressed his head to hers and said, I always wanted to do that. Me too. And I am sore. Before she could say anything more, he once again kissed her. I know why you didn't tell me, so there is no need to be sorry about that. They both stayed silent for a while then Naruto confessed, I love you. Kayubi's eyes widened and she quickly replied, I love you too. Naruto pulled Kayubi in a searing kiss. Their tongues battled for a while before they pulled back. They both were interrupted by Chaos's voice stating, It's time Naruto. Kayubi, hearing this, starting shouting, No, I won't let you go. Don't leave me alone again. Naruto quickly hugged Kayubi again and started rubbing circles on her back, You don't want me to go, to be free. You know that I am living a life where my dreams are not my own. My life has been a plaything for different people. 
I don't want to live like this. And who said I will leave you alone? Chaos is not a different person Kurihime. I am a part of him. Please try to befriend him. Naruto pleaded. Kurihime looked at him with sadness in her eyes. She kissed him once again. Go, I will try to befriend him. After all, you will be somewhere inside him. A small circular table materialized with two chairs on the opposite side. Chaos was already sitting on a chair. Naruto sat on the other chair. Chaos looked at him for a few seconds then asked, Do you want me to do anything? I promise that I will try to do it with all my heart. Naruto answered him without any hesitation, Yes, I want you to take care of Kurihime. Before meeting you, I don't know what emotions were mine or what were programmed, but I am sure I loved Kurihime. And I want you to bring peace to the world. I don't understand peace and I haven't seen peace. I only think that peace is an ideal world where there is no war or unnecessary deaths, but I think you know peace, so please bring peace into the world. Chaos shook hands with Naruto and agreed to do both things. Naruto was confused about what he should do now. Usually, his shadow clones dispelled on his command, but he knew that things wouldn't be that simple. Chaos, seeing this, produced a black and red dagger and handed it to Naruto. Then suddenly Chaos pulled his hood down. Naruto and Kurihime gasped after seeing his face. They both were seeing the face very similar to Naruto without his whiskers or any baby fat and a few other minor changes that made his face a lot more handsome. His eyes were glowing and his skin was fairer. He winked at Kurihime, who blushed. I am going to use your name and face from now on. Names have power and if I gave my real name to someone, my enemies would find me very quickly. Now, I want you to go outside the mindscape. You will find the dagger in your hand. I want you to stab yourself with it. This technique is very similar to the technique Zetsu used on Madara. You can also have some words with your former teammates. Whatever you do, don't lose that dagger. And thank you Naruto. Said Chaos. Naruto bowed to Chaos and gave a sad smile to Kurahime before disappearing from his mindscape. Chaos turned towards Kurahime and spoke, I am sorry for doing this to you, but I am not sorry about absorbing him. I can't let him suffer anymore. But you are free to take out your anger on me if it helps you to cope. Kurahime turned towards Chaos with wide eyes before started chuckling, we were never introduced to each other. Hi, I am Kurahime, Kayubi no Kitsune. She was reminded of the time when Naruto used some similar words to Akumo Kunoichi. I am Chaos, primordial god from a different dimension, but you can call me Naruto. It's always a pleasure to meet such a beautiful Kitsune, Kurahime. EPLIED CHAOS Kurahime's good mood disappeared after hearing the name Naruto. Suddenly, the whole mindscape started shaking. It's time. Outside world, Naruto quickly came to his senses and saw that Kagaya had not emerged from the smoke yet, and he felt that dagger in his hand. He turned to his side to see that Sasuke was standing there panting. He moved near him and shouted, Oi, Teme. What the hell Dobi? Why are you shouting? shouted Sasuke with a scowl on his face only to be punched on the nose by Naruto. His nose started to bleed heavily. I always wanted to do that, said Naruto with a smirk on his face. Why did you punch Sasuke, Naruto? asked Kakashi. Naruto turned to saw that Sasuke, Kakashi, and Sakura were glaring at him, while Obito was looking at him with curiosity. In the distance, he saw that Kagaya was emerging from the smoke completely unharmed. She was also looking at him something akin to curiosity. Looks like some people could feel that there is something different about me. Thought Naruto. He looked back towards his team members to see that they were still glaring at him, while Sakura was healing Sasuke's nose. I could tell you why I did that, but I don't think it matters, so I will only say one last thing to you backstabbing assholes, fuck you. He quickly pulled out the dagger from his sleeve. Zetsu, who was watching the confrontation curiously, roared in anger after seeing the dagger and understood what was going to happen. He could feel his energy from the daggers. He shouted, Kagaya, stop him. Kagaya was stunned when she heard her son calling her by her name but quickly shot towards Naruto to stop him from whatever he was doing, all the while shooting all killing ash bones towards Naruto. Naruto, after hearing Zetsu roaring in anger, gives him the middle finger then stabs himself in the chest. He could see that all his teammates' faces were set in horror. Huh, they must be thinking that they won't be able to win the war. Thought Naruto. He could also see that those all-killing ashbones were about to hit him, 
But what he was surprised to see most was the confusion, sadness and sorrow in Kaguya's eyes. Looks like he was hallucinating. Suddenly he was engulfed in a warm embrace that he could only compare to finally arriving home after a long journey. Yes, he was finally home. I am free. To an outside observer, one second the all-killing ashbones were about to hit Naruto, who had a small smile on his face, and the next second they were all blown away from the explosion that originated from Naruto. Naruto could be seen standing in the center covered in white flames releasing huge amount of energy, all the ninjas were barely clinging to consciousness, while Kagaya had moved away to avoid the explosion. Black Zetsu was shouting obscenities about someone, while also shouting at Kagaya to stop this. Suddenly all the energy in the air started to get sucked into Naruto and a black cocoon started to form around him. After all the extra energy was sucked from the air, all the ninjas saw a large black orb in the place of Naruto. Kagaya was still shooting different attacks at the orb but nothing seemed to be affecting it. Sasuke, do you have any idea what's happening? Questioned Kakashi. Sakura and Obito also turned towards Sasuke for answers. Kagaya, who had decided that the orb was impenetrable, was also hearing the conversation. No, I have no idea. After we hit Kagaya with our combined effort, Naruto asked me if I felt something odd, I replied with a no and asked what he felt. He said that it felt like someone was reading his mind. As soon as he uttered the words, reading his mind, Zetsu once again started shouting, not paying attention to his company, that accursed god, how is he alive? Even if he was alive he should be sealed and unable to interact with anyone. Now what should I do? He will surely kill me in this state. Before he could say anything, Kagaya threw him out of her sleeve and shouted, Who are you? You are not my Sochi. Zetsu, quickly realizing his mistake, tried to correct it, What are you saying Ka-san? I am your Sochi. Please, don't say things like that. Kagaya, hearing this, relaxed but after remembering what she heard once again shouted, don't lie to me. Who are you and where is my Sochi? The ninjas who were watching this had no idea what was going on anymore. Sasuke thought about attacking her while she was distracted but something told him that it would be a very bad idea. Yes, why don't you tell her about yourself Zetsu? If you don't want to I will tell her all. One cannot refuse to answer a question asked by such a beautiful woman. Came an unknown smooth and cultured voice. Everyone quickly turned towards the source of the voice. There was a man standing in the place of the red orb. He was of height about 6 feet 3 inches and was dressed in a black cloak and hood. His face was hidden behind the hood but a smirk could be seen on his face. He placed a hand on his hood and pulled it down. Both Kagaya and Sakura blushed after seeing his face. Everyone noted that his face structure was very similar to Naruto's with fairer skin and without any birthmarks. His blue eyes were glowing with hidden power and he was also carrying a sword on his back. Um, who are you? asked Sakura shyly. You can call me Naruto. Yes, I know that I am not Naruto Uzumaki but he was a part of me or you can call him a very advanced clone of me. No, I am not going to tell you my real name. Answered Naruto. He then turned towards Zetsu who was glaring at him. Now now, no need to be hostile Zetsu. Is this how you greet your old friend? By glaring at him. Zetsu just glared at him and refused to say anything. Enough. Who are you? And how do you know Zetsu? Asked a very annoyed Kagaya. I will answer your question, after you tell me how do you know Zetsu? Asked Naruto. Kagaya looked annoyed but still answered, he was created by me after I ate the chakra fruit. Did you see him being created? No, of course not. I will tell you what really happened. I am a primordial god just like Shinju, only stronger. After getting bored for a long time we decided to spar against each other to remove our boredom. In our last match the spar became intense and I destroyed his physical body. When I went home, I landed right in the middle of a conspiracy against myself by my subordinates and Shinju himself. I think that was the reason for making the spar more intense. Long story short, I was weakened and sealed for eternity. At least that's what they planned because you can't kill a primordial god. So they decided to just seal me, but you can see I am out of the seal. Now Shinju, after getting his body destroyed, transformed into his plant form and started the process of creating a body. But you stopped the process in the middle when you ate the chakra fruit. So Shinju, seeing his power getting stolen, decided to follow you and started calling you Ka-san and also influencing you. 
His plan of getting a body was spoiled by your sons, who sealed you in the moon. Poor Shinju would have created his body as soon as you came back to this world, but he is still missing a quarter of his power which is inside me. After the explanation everyone was looking at Black Zetsu with wide eyes. Naruto moved towards Zetsu who tried to run away. Naruto easily caught him and asked, Now what should I do to you? I can't let you leave because you will somehow inform my enemies. I can't kill you because it's impossible. Oh well, I will decide what to do about you later. Naruto opened a rift in space directly leading to one of his prison cell in his castle's dungeon and kicked him inside it. Then turned towards the remaining people in this dimension. What did you do to him? asked Kagaya. Sasuke, Kakashi, Obito and Sakura quickly readied themselves to fight so that they weren't caught unaware. I sent him to one of my special prison cells in my dungeon. Now that Shinju is not here, I don't want to fight at the moment. So let's talk and rest for today, if you still want to fight tomorrow, then we will fight tomorrow. And please don't even think of lying and saying that you are not tired. I know that the technique Shinju used to break you out of the moon is very tiring," said Naruto. Sasuke, hearing this, wanted to attack them both but quickly realized that he was also in a very bad state. He quickly backed down and hoped Kagaya and Naruto would kill each other. Very well, we will fight tomorrow. I want to ask a few questions. Please answer them for me," replied Kagaya. Great. Let's head to my home. We will discuss your questions there answered Naruto in a relaxed tone. Kagaya on other hand tensed and thought it was a trap. Naruto, seeing this, just sighed and said, I swear on my honor as a primordial that this is not a trap and that I just want to go to my home because it's comfortable. Kagaya, after hearing this, relaxed and nodded. Before we go Kagaya-san, can you please remove the Muggen Tsukuyomi? asked Naruto. Why? questioned Kagaya. In truth she had no problem in doing so. Now that Shinju was not near her, she was not feeling the overwhelming urge to reclaim all chakra, she was still wary of the handsome blonde. Because I want to talk to them tomorrow. Ultimately though, it's still your choice. Answered Naruto. Kagaya looked at him for a few seconds before nodding. Her third eye pulsed for a moment before going back to normal. Naruto then turned towards the remaining people in the original dimension and said, Go home, I will come to meet you tomorrow and there I will decide if I should leave you alive or not. Then he opened a portal to his home and passed through it with Kagaya following behind him. One day later, all the five cages along with the Edo Tensai Hokages and the remaining shinobi were standing on the destroyed battlefield. Something happened to Sasuke, Kakashi, and Obito after returning to their home dimension and filling others in on the situation. Sakura was taking care of them in a medical tent. After they heard everything from Sasuke, they quickly came to the conclusion that this primordial god, wanted something, and that was the reason he didn't attack yesterday. All of them knew that they would all be killed if they decided to fight, but they were still ready to defend themselves. Suddenly, a rift appeared in the space in front of them. Through the rift Naruto and then Kagaya Otsutsuki came out but before the rift closed another hooded individual came out. Everybody tensed in preparation of a fight, while a lot of female Kunoichi were blushing after seeing Naruto's face. Naruto came out of the rift and took a look at the gathered shinobi. Normally, he wouldn't have returned here, but due to his promise to his clone he decided to come here and fulfill it. Excellent. Now that everyone is here, we can start, said Naruto. Who are you? And what happened to Naruto? shouted the rakage. I am a primordial god. That's all I am going to tell you about me, and about Naruto, he was my clone, and we both decided that it was better for him to be absorbed by me replied Naruto. There was a lot of murmuring after hearing this. What do you mean my son was a clone? Don't lie to us, and he would never allow himself to be absorbed without fulfilling his dreams, said Minato Namikaze with conviction. A lot of people were nodding after hearing this. Ah, I have nothing to gain from lying about it, and are you sure he would never allow himself to be absorbed? And don't talk about his dreams. I told him all about your machinations and seals, after hearing that his thoughts and his dreams were not his own and how the people closest to him had betrayed him, we both came to a mutual agreement that he should be absorbed by should be grateful that I didn't tell him that those seals were made by you, Minato. Kakashi, Hiruzen and Minato were shaking after hearing this. Everyone else was looking at them suspiciously. What seals is he talking about Sarutobi? asked Toborama, 
Everyone turned towards the third Hokage for answers but he just bowed his head and remained silent. Minato was also looking at ground and not meeting anyone's eye. You can ask your questions later, I don't want to stay one more second than necessary. He gave a hand signal to Kagaya who nodded her head. She brought everyone to a small plane near Konoha using Amanamanaka. Naruto turned towards everyone and saw that they were more wary of them after seeing her power. He made a familiar crosshand seal and hundreds of shadow clones burst into existence. He turned towards his clones and couldn't stop himself from admiring the group of clones he had formed. You know what to do, he said to the clones. With a chorus of, hi, they all jumped towards Konoha. What are you doing? asked Tsunade. She was feeling very confused at the moment and had no idea what to do. Usually, she would have punched someone to remove her frustration but after hearing that the Naruto she knew was dead and never going to come back, she was once again falling in depression. You will see. Within a few minutes every clone was carrying someone out of the Konoha. Minato, seeing this, quickly understood what was going to happen and gave a quick message to Hiruzen with the help of Anbu signals and started going through hand seals. Tobarama and Hashirama also understood what was going to happen but only Tobarama prepared to stop it from happening. Hashirama was in deep thought after hearing what his successors had done in the name of Village Peace and was disgusted with them and had no intention of stopping whatever Naruto was planning. As soon as the third and second Hokage saw that Minato was about to finish doing hand seals lunged at Naruto to stop him from escaping. But before they could even touch him the second man who had come with Naruto and Kagaya appeared between them and kicked them both in the gut. Minato, seeing the other Hokage lunging at Naruto, quickly finished the hand seals and slammed his hand on the ground, shouting, dead demon consuming seal. An aura of dread and coldness enveloped the whole area. Shinigami appeared behind Minato and boomed, why have you summoned me, more? He stopped in middle sentence and looked at the fourth Hokage with something akin to confusion and curiosity, though it was very difficult to say because of his mask. I am sure I devoured your soul in the past. How did you escape? It doesn't matter. This time I will make sure that you never escape again. Minato, hearing this, sighed in relief that Shinigami would still do what he was summoned for and replied, I want you to seal him inside me. He said pointing at Naruto, who was looking at them with amusement in his eyes. Shinigami saw where Minato was pointing and started laughing and became visible to everyone. A lot of people were stunned after hearing Shinigami laughing. Shinigami moved towards where Naruto was standing and bowed. Hello, Naruto-sama. Naruto nodded at Shinigami and greeted, Hello, Shinchan. People who were seeing this had to pick their jaws from floor as they looked at both Naruto and Shinigami with wide disbelieving eyes. There were a few shouts of, Kai, from people who thought that they were in a genjutsu. Naruto turned towards them and said, Did I not tell you that I am a primordial god? Shinigami can never harm a being that is more powerful than him. After hearing this, whatever confidence and morale they had broke down, they now understood how hopelessly outmatched they were. Naruto received memories of his last clone that dispelled after checking that no one remained in Konoha. He turned towards the living cages. Shinigami, seeing that he was not needed there, went back to his own realm, but not before glaring at Minato, who gulped after seeing the glare. Now, Naruto Uzumaki wanted me to bring peace to this world and I agreed that I would do it. So, I want you all to stop warring between each other and start living in peace and take whatever steps you have to, so that there is no fifth shinobi war. If not, here is a demonstration of what I would do to your village. Hearing this the second, third and fourth Hokages once again tried to stop him but were stopped by the unknown man. Naruto placed his hand in a praying position then started to pull them away from each other. Everyone could feel the energy building up between his palms. In few seconds, a pure white orb formed between his palms, he pointed his palms towards Konoha and the orb flew towards the village at a very fast speed. It tore a hole through walls and houses, and when it reached the center of Konoha, it exploded. There was a huge flash of light, then it all ended. The place where Konoha once stood was nothing more than molten land. Everybody was stunned at seeing the destruction from such a small orb. That was nothing but a small part of my power, so, do you agree about not warring again? I am only doing this because I told my clone that I would bring peace. I could always leave only one person alive, then there would be no wars. So, choose carefully, war or peace? Asked Naruto. Everyone gulped after hearing this. Ignoring the questions from Konoha ninjas like, why did you destroy Konoha? 
fools as if I will ever leave a place like that on the map where I was tortured and abused. They should be grateful that I didn't kill them. The cages of the remaining four villages were in deep discussion about their next move. I don't want my village to be wiped from face of elemental nations, and I don't think that we can defeat him. So let's agree about peace. It's not like it would harm our village in any way, stated Gara. Yes, we cannot win against him. Even if we attack him, the way Kagaya and that unknown man are flanking him, I am quite sure that they will fight with him, said Mei Terumi while licking her lips and looking at the blonde. The Rakage just grunted and the Suchikage nodded his head. Tsunade replied, It's not like we have any choice. It's either peace or death. Everyone nodded after hearing this. They turned towards Naruto and Gara said, We agree about not going to war again. Naruto, who had been talking about something with Kagaya, turned towards the cages and said, Excellent, now my work here is done. But before I go I am leaving him here. He pointed at the unknown man. He will report to me about the condition of the elemental nations. Everyone will follow whatever he says. Do you have any problem with this arrangement? All the cages wanted to protest against it, but they just shook their heads. Naruto, seeing this, opened a space time rift and said, You know what to do. Don't disappoint me. He looked at the unknown man who nodded his head. Come on, Kagaya. Let's go. Naruto said, moving towards the rift. Yes. Master, replied Kagaya. Naruto, hearing this, stumbled but quickly regained his balance and just shook his head. As soon as they both passed through the rift, it closed, leaving a hooded man in front of thousands of shinobi who were looking at him with curiosity, hostility, and fear. The unknown man just said, Yo. Mei moved forward and asked, If we are going to work together from now on, then please tell us your name. Hearing this, the man pulled his hood down. A lot of women blushed after seeing his handsome face. He was grinning like he was the devil himself. Hello, my name is Lucifer and I am the devil, after the merging. Kagaya and Naruto emerged from the portal in a very large hall. The hall was made entirely of, of dark black stones and there were a lot of golden statues on the both sides of the room. Kagaya quickly activated her Byakugan to check for any danger but was surprised when she was not able to see through the walls. There were two thrones on one side of the room but the most surprising thing in the hall was its ceiling. The ceiling seemed transparent and she could see a multicolored sky through it. She was having a very hard time controlling her nerves as everything in the room practically oozed power. She had never felt so much concentration of power at one place, not even at the Shinju's tree when she went there to eat the chakra fruit, and it was making her very nervous. She saw Naruto moving towards the thrones and quickly followed him. Naruto moved towards the thrones and sat on one of them. After sitting comfortably, he looked at the second throne with some longing and sadness in eyes. He closed his eyes and after a few seconds the second throne disappeared. He opened his eyes to see Kagaya looking at him warily with her Byakugan active and ready to fight. I am not going to attack you, Kagaya, said Naruto. Kagaya was startled, when a chair appeared behind her and leapt back to create a distance between her and the chair. Naruto, seeing this, started snickering. Kagaya, hearing him snickering, realized that she was startled by a chair and just glared at him. Shut up! shouted Kagaya. How did you create a chair from nothing? I didn't even sense you using any energy. This castle is totally under my control. I can use it just like my mindscape. So, creating a chair is not a problem for me, answered Naruto. Hearing this, Kagaya started feeling like she was in the belly of a beast. Seeing that no one was going to attack her she sat on the chair and looked at Naruto. What do you want to do after tomorrow Kagaya? asked Naruto. Kagaya was confused after hearing the strange question but quickly realized what he was asking and replied, I have no idea. A long time ago, I just wanted to bring peace. Now, if one of us is able to bring peace, then I just want to live a normal life. Hearing this, Naruto just nodded his head and requested, Tell me something about yourself. Kagaya. Hearing this strange request, Kagaya decided to comply. She didn't have anything else to do anyway. I don't remember much about the time before I ate the chakra fruit, but I remember watching my father and mother die by the hands of a family friend. My father was the king of a small country in the land of fire, so there were a lot of samurai under him. His last order to them was to get me to safety. I was hunted for a month and almost every loyal samurai who accompanied me were killed. During that time, 
I heard rumors about a forbidden fruit which gave unimaginable power to its eater, but everyone was forbidden to eat it by the gods. I decided to eat the fruit because I had nothing to lose. It was a long journey from where we were to the god tree. Finally, when we reached a place near the tree, we were stopped by monks from going any further. I ordered my samurai to engage them while I sneaked past them to the Shinju tree and ate the fruit. As you know, I was influenced by Shinju. Under his influence, I committed many atrocities, but was able to bring peace to the elemental nations and I was eventually hailed as the rabid goddess. During my travels, I came across a dying mother who was holding two injured babies. I healed the babies, but was unable to heal the mother. But my chakra somehow mutated the babies and gave them the ability to wield it. I decided to name them Hagoromo and Hamura Otsutsuki. My time spent with them was the most memorable time of my life. After a few years, Shinju was able to dominate my mind and the rest is history. I never planned anything other than bringing peace because it always seemed too impossible to achieve. After tomorrow, if there is no more war and I am still alive, then I want to enjoy life once more. Naruto, who had heard the whole story, wiped his tears away and proceeded to hug Kagaya. Kagaya stiffened from the contact but slowly relaxed due to the lack of aggressive intentions. Kagaya tried to remember the last time someone hugged her, but couldn't remember it. She didn't even remember the last time she'd had a civil conversation with someone other than her sons. After thinking things like this, she started sobbing on Naruto's shoulder. Naruto awkwardly patted her on the back. In both lifetimes he had very little experience with crying girls. After a few minutes, she stopped crying and moved away from Naruto and sat back on her chair. Naruto also sat back on his throne and asked, Are you alright, now? Yes, sorry about that. I just remembered something from my miserable life, answered Kagaya. Naruto opened his mouth to say something but stiffened and then closed his eyes. Kagaya, seeing Naruto stiffening, also prepared to fight, but after a few seconds Naruto relaxed and turned towards his left. The action was mimicked by Kagaya. The door on left side opened and Shinigami floated through it. Kagaya, seeing Shinigami, bowed but was surprised to see Shinigami bowing to Naruto. Her eyes widened when she realized that even if he was weakened she was still talking to a primordial god. She just hoped that she had not offended him completely or she was screwed. If he ordered Shinigami to kill her then she was sure that even she wouldn't be able to survive getting her soul extracted. Naruto, as if reading her mind, gave her a small smile as to assure her that everything was alright. Kagaya relaxed a bit, but her body was still tensed. Naruto-sama, it's good to see you again, greeted Shinigami. It seems that our plan worked perfectly. Yes, it's good to see you too Shin-chan, replied Naruto. Take a seat, we are discussing the future. Shinigami twitched when he heard Naruto calling him Shin-chan but didn't say anything. Another chair materialized beside Kagaya. Shinigami shifted his body to a smaller size and sat down on his chair. Kagaya, seeing herself getting completely ignored by the death god, was a bit offended but she dared not voice it. Kagaya, you don't need to be offended by Shin-chan. He doesn't like to talk to new people. And you don't need to fear him too much, due to having so much of Shinju's power, you are technically a demi-primordial. Shin-chan is below you in the pecking order, but he can still kill you in a fight. So unless you offend him or attack him, you are safe, said Naruto. Kagaya, after hearing this, sighed in relief while Shinigami just grunted. What are your plans for tomorrow, Naruto-sama, asked Shinigami. Tomorrow I am going to destroy my former home, and no, I am not going to kill everyone. This will scare the other cages and then I will give them a choice between peace and annihilation. They will definitely choose peace. I also plan to create a capital city somewhere in the elemental nations. All I need is a strong enough person to keep them in line, answered Naruto. This is a nice plan, Naruto-sama. All you have to do is scare them properly, and for a strong person, you could always use him as your right hind man in the elemental nations, suggested Shinigami. Yes. Great idea, Shin-chan, shouted Naruto. He must be someone important to Naruto to make him shout like that, thought Kagaya. She saw that Naruto was meditating on his throne with his hand outstretched and his power was increasing. Soon, a black and red colored orb formed on his hand. Naruto gave a quick signal to Shinigami to start with the process. Shinigami got up from his chair and started chanting something. After a few minutes of chanting, 
he stabbed Naruto in his other hand and let the blood pool on the ground. Once he saw that there was enough blood on the ground, he signaled Naruto to drop the sphere in the blood and backed away. Naruto dropped the sphere in the blood and erected a barrier around it. As soon as the sphere touched the blood, the room seemed to darken and all the shadows stretched towards the orb. Soon a black cocoon formed around the orb and blood. The cocoon was very similar to the cocoon in which chaos absorbed Naruto. Five minutes later, a crack appeared on the cocoon. Soon the whole cocoon started to fall apart to reveal a man, who seemed to be in his mid-twenties. He was wearing golden-colored armor with pauldrons, with a black-colored cape behind him. He had long blonde hair that reached his shoulders, high cheekbones, and sharp face with a small goatee. He opened his pupils to reveal black eyes that seemed to suck light into them. Lucy Chan! shouted Naruto and hugged him. Um, who are you? It's me Chaos Uzumaki, Dadbeo! shouted Naruto. He seemed to realize what he said and quickly went back to his throne and closed his eyes and started meditating. Kaguya's eyes widened after hearing the last sentence, she turned to Shinigami and saw that he didn't seem even a bit surprised. At least, she thought that he didn't seem to be surprised, it was very hard to detect facial expressions on his face. She then turned towards the mystery man to see him looking at Naruto with wide eyes. He quickly got his emotions under control and turned towards her and Shinigami and introduced himself, my name is Lucifer and I am a devil. I know who you are, Lucifer, said Shinigami. My name is Kagaya Otsutsuki, and according to Naruto, I am a demi-primordial. Lucifer's eyes widened after hearing this and looked at her more closely. Before he could say anything, however, Naruto's eyes opened. Lucifer quickly bowed to Naruto and said, Father, I don't want to sound ungrateful, but how am I here? Last thing I remember is. I mean. I. Lucifer took a deep breath before releasing it and continued. I remember seeing the other three Satans capturing him, with a seal powered by their own life force, then using all my remaining energy and life force to create a hole in the your seal to send him through it. I am very, very sure that I died after sending him through it. He spoke him like it was venom. Meanwhile, Kagaya was looking between Lucifer and Naruto with wide eyes, to see any resemblance but was unable to find any. Naruto, on the other hand, was looking at him with amusement and a small smile. I hope you didn't think I would let you die without resurrecting you. Also, I am officially your father now, my blood flows through your veins. Lucifer had tears in his eyes after hearing this. He had sacrificed himself to create a hole in the seal and yet his father hadn't let him completely die. Chaos also destroyed his last link to that man, his blood. Now the blood of his real father flows through his veins. His emotions were going haywire and he was having a very hard time controlling it. Neither Shinigami nor Kagaya interrupted the father and son bonding moment. Lucifer just bowed his head and after a few minutes got his emotions under control. Father, how did you resurrect me? What is the condition of seal? How are you stronger than before? Asked Lucifer. He wanted to shout and dance that he was alive, but it would have been inappropriate behavior for a devil like himself. Calm down, Lucifer. I was able to catch your soul as soon as you died with the help of the seal that I placed on you when you visited me the first time in my prison. There is a small crack on the seal and it has weakened the seal enough for me to pull people here from the outside world. Long story short, I divided my soul and sent it to the elemental nations with the help of Shin Chan. There, he exchanged the soul of a baby with mine. When I absorbed it in me today, I got the ability to wield chakra and a being that is made up of 20% of Shinju's chakra is sealed inside me now. Naruto answered all the questions respectively. Ha 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 ha. Only you, father, only you could steal someone's power even when you were sealed. After getting his laughing under control, he asked, What about Shinju, father? I didn't think he would allow anyone to use his chakra. The funny thing is, Shinju is currently locked in my dungeon and the beautiful lady beside you is responsible for stealing rest of his chakra, answered Naruto. Kaguya's face turned red from anger and embarrassment for being called a thief and beautiful in the same line, but she realized that she did steal the chakra fruit. Naruto suddenly stiffened and closed his eyes, his whole body started to tremble. He looked to be in pain, but after a few seconds his whole body stopped trembling and he released a deep breath. He opened his eyes and looked at his hands then he turned towards them and said, Enough questions for now, I want to get over this. Lucifer, 
I want you to be my representative in the elemental nations. You have to make sure that there are no more wars in the future. Due to my blood flowing through your veins, your powers should have increased, so I don't think you will have any problem in the elemental nations. Do you agree? Yes, father. I have enough experience in maintaining peace to handle any warring humans, but I will need information about them. I don't know anything about the elemental nations. I don't want to offend you father, but wouldn't it better if I returned to the underworld? It would give you a foothold in that dimension, asked Lucifer. He had a theory about not sending him back to the underworld, but he wanted to confirm it. You know the ancient laws. Even I have to follow them. I am not allowed to resurrect anyone and let them live in the dimension in which they died. In your case, I am using a loophole by sending you to live in the elemental nations. With your experience in maintaining devil races, you are the best candidate for this job. Don't worry about information. Shinigami will send some of his minions to teach you everything. Don't disappoint me, Lucifer, said Naruto seriously. Don't worry father, I haven't disappointed you yet and don't plan to do it in future, replied Lucifer. Shinigami, complete the second task I gave you as soon as possible and send some of your reapers to teach Lucifer everything he should know about the elemental nations, ordered Naruto. My reapers are already searching for it, Naruto-sama, and I will send a reaper to Lucifer as soon as I leave here, replied Shinigami. Before Naruto could say anything else he was interrupted by Lucifer. Um. Kagaya-san, why are you in your battle form? I don't think anyone is going to attack you here, asked Lucifer. Naruto's eyebrows started twitching due to interruption but didn't say anything. What do you mean by my battle form? I don't have any other forms, asked a confused Kagaya. There are commonly two forms of every supernatural being who crossed a certain power level. In our normal forms, we look like a normal human. While in our battle forms, we release our power and it forms a sort of battle suit around us, like the form you are currently in, with those horns and dress or like the form Shinigami is currently in, answered Naruto. He knew why she was in this form, but was not planning to tell her anything until he could make sure that she was not going to be an enemy in the future. Then why is Shinigami-sama in his battle form? asked Kagaya. She made sure she called Shinigami by his proper title. Even if she was above Shinigami in power, she was not going to take any chance of offending him because she was sure that he could easily kill her with his skills. Hearing her question, both Lucifer and Naruto started to snicker and it soon turned into full-blown laughter while Shinigami glared at Kagaya for asking that question. Shinigami's favorite game is poker but his poker face in human form is so bad that even a novice could pick up his emotions. One day, after losing 15 games of poker continuously against Kami-chan, he transformed into his battle form and won the next match. After winning, he swore on my name that he would always be in his battle form. Any oath taken on my name is binding, and unless I release him from it he can't change into his normal form, explained Naruto. Kagaya had a very hard time controlling her laughter after hearing the story, but the glare Shinigami was giving her helped. Why have you not released him from the oath? asked a confused Kagaya. As far as she knew, Shinigami was working for Naruto. Shouldn't he release him from that oath? It's not that simple. I just can't release someone from an oath because he works for me. It would decrease the value of any oath sworn on my name. Shinigami understands it, so he hasn't asked to be released from the oath. You are in your battle form because you don't have control over your chakra so it always keeps you in that form, answered Naruto. What do you mean I don't have control over my chakra? I was called a goddess due to my control over chakra, and I remember defeating your clone and the other boy a few hours ago, asked an angry Kagaya. You were winning because you had a lot more chakra, but you don't have control. If you think that you have total control over your chakra then walk on that wall, retorted Naruto while pointing to the nearby wall. Why would I need to walk on the wall when I can fly? asked Kagaya. It will tell you whether you have control over chakra or not. Just apply some chakra to your feet then try to walk on it, answered Naruto. He already knew that she would have bad chakra control because of her huge chakra reserves till now. Shinju had been helping her in manipulating her chakra, but with Shinju sealed in his dungeon without any way to influence anyone, she wouldn't be able to use it as easily. Kagaya glared at him for making her do this but moved towards the wall. When she reached near the wall, she took a deep breath and placed one leg on the wall only to be blown away by the chakra and hit the opposite wall. Ow! What happened? Asked a dazed Kagaya while checking her horns to make sure that they were alright. 
She turned towards others only to see Naruto and Lucifer laughing while Shinigami seemed to be barely controlling himself. After getting his laughter in control, Naruto replied, You applied too much chakra in your feet, so you were blown away by it. Kagaya, hearing this once again, tried to walk on the wall only to get the same result. After her fifth try, she returned to her seat. All right, I agree that I don't have proper chakra control, said Kagaya while glaring at the others, daring them to laugh. Naruto took a deep breath and looked at Kagaya intensely, everyone felt the sudden tension in air. Kagaya, I have no idea what I should do to you. You said you want to live a normal life after peace, but you won't ever be normal in a world where your chakra is greater than everyone else combined, and I won't leave anything to chance knowing that you could decide that the world is better under a genjutsu or something like that and disturb the balance. I also can't let you go to the second dimension because you could create problems for me there by warning the others. Tell me, what should I do with you? Asked Naruto. Shinigami and Lucifer tensed and prepared for any aggressive movements from Kagaya. Kagaya was a bit surprised by the sudden change in Naruto. She had never seen him so cold and aggressive, but she understood that she was a wild card and that he didn't want to take any risks. Participating in a civil conversation after so long had made her forget that she might be in hostile territory. She thought about her options, she couldn't mix with normal people due to her gargantuan chakra reserves. They would always be wary of her and give her hostile looks, and she didn't think that Naruto will let her go back there when she was a wild card. She also thought about killing Naruto then doing whatever she wanted, but quickly discarded that idea when she remembered that he was immortal and that the other two would surely help him. She didn't even know the powers of Shinigami and Lucifer, but was sure that Shinigami could kill her easily. Her thoughts were interrupted when Lucifer spoke. Kagaya-san, I think you understand that if you fight against us you will be killed. Father won't allow you to go back to where you came from when there is a chance that you could mess up his future plans. Even if he does allow you to go back, you will never be able to mingle with others when everyone else is mortal and you are a semi-immortal. I have another option, if you want to listen to it then just ask, said Lucifer. Naruto and Shinigami were looking at both Kagaya and Lucifer very closely. This was the first time they had ever seen, Devil, Lucifer in action. Lucifer always treated Naruto with nothing but respect and instead of trying to manipulate him with his silver tongue, he chose to be honest. What else can I do, other than being trapped here in this castle or die while fighting? Asked Kagaya. She really didn't see any other option. She cursed herself for not killing Naruto earlier when he was weaker. She was now trapped in a castle with her dreams falling apart and a high chance of death. You can agree to take father's mark and work under him. He can train you to control your chakra and let you go to the second dimension, where you can easily enjoy your life, said Lucifer. Naruto was stunned for a second, then realized that he would have killed a potential subordinate if it wasn't for Lucifer. He now understood how Lucifer was able to rule and lead the devil race easily. Kagaya was also stunned for a second but then she thought about Lucifer's option. Naruto could easily train her to control chakra and, according to them, she would be able to transform back into her human form. Then she would be able to go the second dimension. Naruto did not seem like the type of person that abused his subordinates. The interactions she had seen between him, Shinigami, and Lucifer demonstrated this. The main thing that made her choice easy was that she wouldn't have to die. Even if she was going to agree, she wouldn't make this easy for him. After all, she used to be the princess of the Otsutsuki clan. She nodded to herself then turned towards Naruto. I will join you only if you manage to defeat me. I also have some conditions that I want to be fulfilled, said Kagaya. Lucifer, who was sitting on his chair, collapsed backwards with his chair, when he heard about her wanting to fight Naruto. The only sign Naruto and Shinigami gave that they were surprised was the slight widening of their eyes. Very well, if you want to fight against me then I have no problem. We will fight tomorrow after some rest. You should be feeling tired, so get some rest, suggested Naruto. He was starting to feel very tired after today's ordeal and his body was still changing to let him use both his energy and chakra. Very well, I am going to get some sleep, said Kagaya. She got up from her chair and went away from them. Naruto closed his eyes and started to think about what he should do. Kagaya came back after a minute. Um, where should I sleep? She asked. She didn't want them to think her a fool when she went to sleep in without knowing where is continued. I hope it's a bedroom worthy of someone of my status. If you don't remember, 
Then let me remind you that I am a princess of the Otsutsuki clan. She finished haughtily with her nose high. When no one said anything, she looked at them to find them looking at her with blank faces. Her face turned red and started to resemble a tomato when she realized that she was talking to two gods and she was asking about the place being worthy of herself. She was sure they wouldn't let her live this down. Haim Sama, I assure you that the bedrooms here are worthy of someone of such a high status such as yourself, even if it is a castle of a lowly primordial god like myself, said Naruto with most respectful voice he could. After saying this, all three of them started to laugh loudly. Kagaya would have freaked at hearing Shinigami laugh so loudly if it wasn't for the embarrassment she was feeling. She just wanted to hide in her room and never show her face again. After getting himself under control, Naruto pointed towards a door on his right side and said, Choose any bedroom that you like, and I am sorry in advance if there is a bedroom that's not good enough for someone of your status, Haim Sama. As soon as he said it, they once again started to laugh. Kagaya bolted towards the door that Naruto pointed to wanting to get away from the embarrassing situation as soon as possible. After a few minutes they got themselves under control. Naruto-sama, do you think this is a good idea? She is a wild card, and the seal isn't foolproof. She could easily destroy all your plans by warning them, said Shinigami. I know, but she has a lot of power and she will make it easier for me to complete my goals once she is trained properly. This situation has also increased the importance of the task I gave you, said Naruto. Is there anything else you want to talk about? I seriously need some rest. I don't think I can stop the changes more than a few minutes. Shinigami winced while Lucifer looked confused. After hearing this, Shinigami said, Naruto-sama, there is a chance you may experience a slight power-up. This will stop one of our main problems. Naruto looked confused for a moment but asked Shinigami to continue. Shinigami quickly explained his plan to Naruto whose smile got wider each passing second. After hearing the plan, Naruto told both Lucifer and Shinigami to continue with it. After giving a few more instructions to Shinigami and Lucifer, he told them to go. Naruto quickly moved towards his room. Halfway there, his body started to tremble once again. He gritted his teeth to stop himself from screaming. He quickly got inside the nearest room and closed the door, but before he could move more than two steps towards the bed, his pain increased twofold and he fell on the floor while screaming and passed out. Kagaya was enjoying the wonder of bathing after a few centuries. It was wrong on so many level when said like that. She was surprised at first, when she saw clean water, she thought that they were in dimensional gap then how did she get clean water on opening that tap? After a few moments of thinking, she chalked it up to Naruto's powers. She made sure that she scrubbed every part of her body that she could reach, which wasn't much due to the kimono she was wearing and unable to get out of. She theorized that it was a chakra construct and the only way to get out of it was to absorb it back in her body. Sadly, she was unable to do so due to her horrible chakra control. She thought back to the last few hours of her life and was having a hard time believing everything. She was unsealed after a few centuries, then she immediately had to fight against two boys. She was winning until one of the boy transformed into a primordial god, then she received the shock of her life when she found that she was being influenced and controlled by Shinju. She cursed herself for getting so easily influenced by Shinju, even if he is a primordial god. Then, she foolishly followed her possible enemy to his home and enjoyed having civil conversation with two gods and a devil. She started thinking about the predicament she was trapped in. Before she could continue her musing, she was interrupted by a scream outside her bathroom. She quickly got out of the bathroom fully prepared for any hostels, but was surprised to find Naruto passed out on the floor while his body was still convulsing in pain. His eyes were screwed shut while he was still gritting his teeth even while he was still passed out. She quickly picked him up and put him on the bed. She thought about what should she do next but came up with nothing. She had never been in a situation even remotely similar to this. She thought about using her chakra to try to heal him, but immediately discarded the idea as she didn't know how her chakra would affect him. She was starting to freak out when she remembered some female healers wiping patients' bodies in her clan. She quickly went to the bathroom soaked a towel in the water, and returned to the bed. She carefully wiped his face with the towel as she had seen some women do with patients. After a few minutes, his body relaxed and stopped convulsing. She was conflicted about whether she should wipe the rest of his body or not, but decided that it would be improper thing to do. She didn't know whether it was allowed in this time or not, but it was very improper behavior for a woman to do so in her time. That didn't, however, 
stop her from feeling his muscles. She now realized how much she had lost after eating the chakra fruit. She didn't remember much, but she remembered the loneliness she felt when she was a child because she was a princess and had no friends due to the threat of assassination. It was a feeling she remembered her whole life. The only time she didn't remember this feeling was during the time she spent with Hagoromo and Hamura. She once again cursed Shinju for playing with her life. This loneliness was one of the main reasons she accepted being Naruto's subordinate. At least she would never feel lonely again. She looked down and was surprised to see herself caressing Naruto's cheek subconsciously. She blushed beet red and looked around to see if someone had seen her. After she was sure that no one had seen her, she sighed in relief that she wouldn't be embarrassed again by others. She started feeling drowsy so she laid down on the opposite side of the bed. Mindscape When Naruto opened his eyes, he was not surprised to see himself in his mindscape. His previous mindscape had turned into a replica of his throne room. Before he could do anything he was extremely surprised when Kurihime punched him on his nose. Blood started to flow from his nose and from the pain he was feeling he was sure that his nose was broken. His nose quickly healed and blood stopped flowing from it. He turned towards Kurihime and was once again surprised to see Kurihime crying. She quickly hugged him and kept crying on his chest. He tried to think of a reason for her crying but drew a blank so he just kept saying soothing words in her ear while patting her back. After a few minutes, Kurihime stopped crying. He quickly went to his throne and pulled Kurihime into his lap. What happened? Kura-chan. Why were you crying and why did you punch me? Asked Naruto. He was once again surprised when Kurihime turned towards him and kissed him on his lips. I punched you for lying to me, idiot. Why did you lie, Naruto? Asked Kurihime. Naruto's eyes widened after hearing this and he understood what she was talking about. If you figured out that much, Kurachan, then you should know. How did you figure it out anyway? Asked Naruto. I don't know your reasons, so please enlighten me. As for figuring it out, I was thinking that something suspicious was going on when you were talking about it, but I didn't voice it because I wasn't sure, but your introduction gave it away. And your behavior after returning to your mindscape confirmed my theory. Answered Kurihime smugly while Naruto face palmed. Alright. Answer me first then I will enlighten you. What do you think happened to Yami Naruto? Asked Naruto. When your earlier self merged with Yami Naruto, I think the thinking style of both of them merged and he was able to get control above his hatred, answered Kurihime. Naruto, hearing this, just shook his head. No, as soon as Yami Naruto merged with my earlier self, he was erased by the seals because he was just a part of my conscience, or a thinking style, and they erased all the thoughts that lead to negative thinking about Konoha which consisted of 99% of thoughts that created Yami Naruto. You should have seen no change in my earlier self's thinking style even after he merged with Yami Naruto, revealed Naruto. Now that you say it, I really didn't see any changes in you after you merged with Yami Naruto. What does this have to do with the lie? Asked Kurahime. Naruto Uzumaki had about 60% of my total soul, but had less power. I tricked him into thinking that he was a small part of me and I was going to absorb him. If he knew that we were going to merge, then it would have become a battle of wills and power for becoming the main personality and either of us could have become the main personality. Best case scenario, I remain the main personality and slowly receive all the unbrainwashed thoughts and emotions. This is the case now, only I tricked him into surrendering. Worst case scenario, I suffer from a case of double personality. One second I am a brainwashed idiot and next second I am a primordial god. That would have been bad. The absolute worst case scenario, he remains the main personality with my memories and power while my thoughts slowly get erased by the seals. I shudder to think what he would have done with my power, said Naruto while they both shuddered at the last part. You were a primordial god and were able to stop the seals last time you were here, how could they destroy your thoughts? asked Kurahime. As I told you, I tricked him into thinking that he was a part of me so he didn't realize that my power was also his and didn't try to connect or use it, said Naruto. So, who are you? Chaos or Naruto Uzumaki? Asked Kurihime. Even if she already knew the answer she wanted to hear it from his mouth. I introduced myself, didn't I? I am Chaos Uzumaki but you can call me Naruto. The real chaos died the moment he was sealed. I have all the memories and emotions of the real chaos and the real Naruto Uzumaki. However, 
Naruto's emotions may have been filtered by my conscience to remove brainwashed emotions, said Naruto. All these tricking and mergings are giving me a headache. One last question, why were you stopping your chakra and energy pathways from merging? Asked Kurahime while rubbing her forehead. Naruto was petting her tails. I wanted to get some things going before sleeping, said Naruto. He suddenly pulled one of her tails, wanting to see her reaction. Ah, moaned Kurahime. Both Naruto and Kurahime's faces turned red with embarrassment before Kurahime jumped from Naruto's lap and glared at him. Pervert. Why did you pull one of my sensitive tails? shouted Kurahime. She collected all of her tails between her hands and held them close to her bosom as if Naruto would pull them again. I. I didn't know that your tails were sensitive, stuttered Naruto with a red face. He subconsciously noted that it would be helpful information in the future. Kurahime was still glaring at him while holding her tails. I am going to sleep now. I will talk to you tomorrow. My inner body changes should be over by then. It was very painful while I was awake though, said Naruto and faded from the mindscape. When he woke up, his brow furrowed as he tried to figure out what happened and why he was on a bed. Naruto placed his hands on either side of him so he could lean back and use them as a pillar of support while he tried to remember what had happened last night. As his left hand hit the bed, he felt something warm and soft and round underneath his palm. It felt absolutely nothing like his bed. He froze. On reflex, his hand gave an experimental squeeze, which prompted a moan from whatever it was he had grabbed a hold of. His eyes drifted down towards his bed. Fate decided to kick him in balls when Kagaya chose that moment to open her eyes. Her silver eyes met his blue before they shifted to his left hand. Kagaya let out a girlish scream. Kya a h h h h pervert. When her scream reached his ears, it left them ringing and also gave him a headache. Kagaya quickly jumped away from him and held her both hands in front of her chest. She was glaring at him with her Byakugan active as if daring him to make a move. Naruto just face palmed after seeing this. Not again, he muttered. The situation between both Kagaya and Kurahime was very similar. Hell. Both of their expressions in the aftermath were also similar. He just shook his head at the absurd situation and got up from the bed. He turned towards Kagaya and said, Meet me in the throne room in an hour. Throne room When Kagaya came to the throne room, she was surprised to see Naruto sitting on a dining table with two chairs and eating peacefully. After seeing her, he signaled for her to join him. She didn't need to eat to survive, but she still felt the hunger, and she hadn't eaten for a few centuries. Thinking or saying it like that made her feel old. She damn near teleported to the second chair. She was surprised to see fried vegetables and scrambled eggs. I am extremely sorry Haim Sama, if the food is not good enough for someone of your status. The problem is that I don't know how to cook anything except instant ramen and I only know that because of my clone's ramen addiction, mocked Naruto in an extremely respectful voice. Kaguya's face turned red due to embarrassment and she vowed to take revenge. Both of them quickly finished their breakfast and Naruto signaled Kagaya to follow him. Naruto-sama, how did you get fresh vegetables and eggs? asked Kagaya. Hmm. One of the girls brings them regularly. Usually they even cook for me, but I have asked them not to contact me for a few days, answered Naruto. Who are they? asked a confused Kagaya. As far as she knew, he hadn't mentioned any girls in yesterday's discussion. Don't worry, you will meet them soon, replied Naruto. What happened last night, Naruto-sama? You were in a lot of pain, questioned Kagaya. She still remembered his scream and it scared her that something could make a primordial like him scream like that. That was due to the merging of my energy pathways with my chakra pathways. Now, I can use them both easily. Enough questions for now, I will answer your other questions later. It's time for our fight, said Naruto in an excited voice. He opened a door and entered followed by Kagaya. Kaguya's eyes widened in surprise as she found herself in front of an extremely huge field. She was surprised to see Lucifer and Shinigami already there. Lucifer was also being followed by an individual carrying a scythe and dressed in a black cloak with a hood. She quickly deduced that it must be Shinigami's reaper. There are only two rules in this fight Kagaya. Don't use any attacks that change dimensions, and second, don't use any widespread destruction techniques. In return, I won't use chakra said Naruto and moved away from her to stand at the other side of the field. Kagaya understood reasons for both rules. 
Currently, they were in a dimensional gap. Who knows what could happen if she tried her dimension-related attacks? The second rule was to make sure that Castle was safe. She activated her Byakugan and opened her third eye on her forehead to reveal the Rene Sharingan. It was characterized by a ripple-like pattern which spread over the eyeball, with red sclerae and irises, containing a pattern of nine tomo. She could see Naruto at the other end of the field. Shinigami and Lucifer erected a barrier around them to stop any stray attacks. Naruto looked at Kagaya and smirked, this was going to be fun. He signaled Kagaya to start the fight. Naruto quickly moved towards Kagaya with extremely high speed. To an outside observer, it seemed that he teleported to her. He was a bit surprised when her long hair shot towards him to skewer him. He quickly dodged and once again moved towards Kagaya to punch her. He was once again surprised when her hair started to shoot needles towards him with extremely high accuracy and speed. He kept dodging and kept trying to engage her in taijutsu, but her hair never stopped shooting needles at him for even a second. Seeing that the hair was not going to stop attacking him, he jumped back to create some distance between him and Kagaya. He called his sword to him with a mental signal. Immediately, a small dimensional portal opened near his hand and a sword shot through it. Naruto caught the sword in his hand and quickly unsheathed it and threw the sheath in the portal. After the sheath passed through the portal, it closed like it was never there to begin with. All of this took less than a second. The sword resembled a normal katana and the only decoration on his katana could be found on his suba, which was hexagonal opposed to rectangular. The two sides that ran parallel along the blade were long whilst the sides above and below the blade were short, giving it the appearance of a diamond-shaped blade. Its handle was green. Kagaya immediately became wary of the sword due to the immense power that was radiating from the blade. She had never seen a weapon that could produce so much power. Kagaya, I would advise you not to let this blade cut you, said Naruto. The words were spoken in a soft tone, but were easily heard by Kagaya in the silence of the field. Naruto once again ran towards Kagaya in the fastest speed he could go in his weakened form. Kagaya was able to track his movements using her Rinne Sharingan, but her body was unable to react to such high speeds. Naruto appeared behind Kagaya and swung his sword but Kagaya teleported some distance away using her Rinne Sharingan. Her eyes widened when Naruto once again appeared behind her and was already in half swing. She quickly hardened her hair and sent them to skewer him. Naruto, seeing the annoying hair once again, changed the direction of his swing and cut through her hair like a hot knife passing through butter. My precious long hair. How dare you cut my hair? Don't you know how important hair is for a woman? Shouted Kagaya. She was holding her hair protectively and glaring at him. Naruto and the other sweat dropped. They all had the same thought in their heads. Is this woman for real? I will have my revenge, said Kagaya. She let her hair down and even shed a tear from her eyes when she saw that it only reached her knees now instead of reaching the ground. Naruto, on the other hand, was confused. He always thought that the hair using jutsu depended on chakra for their length and had no effect on its original length, even if it got cut. Kagaya started to float in the air and was still glaring at him. She created a lot of chakra fists and sent them to attack him at extremely high speed. He dodged the first few chakra fists by jumping above them and was almost hit by a chakra fist while he was in the air. He quickly jumped back and erected an energy barrier in front of him. The energy barrier was of a golden color but quickly started to lose color due to the relentless attack of the chakra fists. Suddenly, a piercing pain interrupted his musing and he was surprised to see a hair needle sticking out from his left thigh. He quickly pulled it out and the wound quickly healed. He was unsurprised to see some hair needles hitting the barrier. He sighed, he needed to end this quickly. Kagaya had more power and could continue attacking for a long time. He also realized the lack of low destruction and long-ranged attacks in his repertoire. He dropped the barrier, not that it was going to last for a long time, and jumped towards the chakra fists. He quickly blocked some hair needles by his sword and released red lightning from his other hand's fingertips towards an incoming chakra fist. He was a bit surprised when the chakra fist broke down as soon as it came in contact with the lightning. Seeing this result, he quickly channeled lightning in his sword and his sword took a reddish glow. He swung it towards another fist while continuously releasing lightning from the other hand. He briefly imagined himself in red lightning armor similar to the Rakage's lightning armor, but immediately discarded the idea. Red lightning was extremely hard to manipulate, and using it like that would be nigh impossible. Kagaya, 
seeing her chakra fists and needles getting destroyed, decided to increase her attacks and started to shoot all killing ash bones at Naruto. Naruto, seeing this, decided to end this quickly before he needed to pull out the big guns. He dodged the bones in an impressive show of acrobatics and disappeared in a burst of speed only to appear behind Kagaya. His attack was interrupted, however, when long bones sprouted from Kaguya's back and shot towards him. Naruto quickly froze the air in front of him and it turned it into a chunk of black ice, the bones that struck it were unable to pierce it. Naruto kicked the ice chunk towards Kagaya and shot towards her making sure to decrease his presence as much as possible. He was sure that Kaguya's Byakugan wouldn't be able to see through the chunk of black ice as it was saturated with his energy. Kagaya quickly created chakra fists around her and held them in a defensive position like a barrier. The chunk of ice hit the chakra fists and broke into thousand pieces but not before flash freezing the chakra barrier. Naruto, seeing his opportunity, quickly kicked the chakra barrier and broke it. Kagaya, seeing her chakra barrier get so easily broken, froze for a second. That was all the time Naruto needed. Before Kagaya could do anything, he passed through the barrier and planted a kick in her gut. She hunched down in pain and felt a blade resting on her neck. She sighed knowing that she lost. She went through what happened in the fight and saw that she was having some difficulty in controlling her chakra, she was feeling a somewhat watered down version of her chakra obsession and some hate towards Naruto. She could only come up with one cause for her feelings, Shinju, but Shinju was in the dungeon. She decided to voice her thoughts after they were rested. Not that they needed it, both of them were hardly winded. She cut off the chakra flow to her eyes and let them return to their normal state. She landed on the ground with Naruto and saw that Shinigami and Lucifer were already there, but the Reaper who was accompanying Lucifer was missing. She deduced that he had returned to whatever realm he was from. Naruto was also going through what happened in the fight. He had not been in a fight for more than a millennia, and his skills had a lot of rust on them. His body was also not reacting as fast as it should. He could still feel the phantom pain from the side of chest where one of Kaguya's fists had nicked him. He mentally applauded her for hitting him twice. The most concerning thing at the moment, however, was the influence Shinju had over Kagaya. He remembered seeing the inner conflict in her eyes during their fight. Shinju was really a pain in the ass. Even while sealed in a prison cell without any way to influence anything in the outside world, he was still creating problems for him. He was under no delusion that his win would have been so easy if Kagaya had not been fighting to control her chakra and the influence of Shinju at the same time. Naruto-sama, I agree to work under you, but I have three conditions that I want to be fulfilled, said Kagaya. What are your conditions Kagaya? asked Naruto. He was very curious about the conditions that Kagaya wanted to be fulfilled. My first condition is that you provide me a way to go the second dimension, said Kagaya. I agree on your first condition. If you don't mind me asking, why do you want to go there? asked Naruto. I don't think I will be able to settle in the elemental nations. That place contains too many bad memories for me and I want a fresh start. Which leads to my second condition, I want you to train me to the best of your ability and provide me with a means to mingle with the people of the second dimension. I don't think that horns are a part of the normal appearance there, said Kagaya. I was going to do that anyway. Once you have proper chakra control, you should be able to change to your normal or human form. No promises, but I will see what I can do about your wish to mingle with people, said Naruto. This is the most important condition that I want you to agree to. Promise me that you will never abandon me. I don't want to feel lonely again, said Kagaya in a weak voice. She had tears in her eyes and had her head bowed. Naruto felt his heart break after seeing such a strong woman in such a miserable state. He quickly hugged her, keeping in mind to avoid her horns. He once again cursed Shinju, for playing with someone's life. He then and there decided that he would take care of her and make sure that she enjoyed life as much as possible. No, said Naruto. Kagaya, hearing this, tensed at first before she started to cry hysterically. Naruto continued, I will do something better. I swear on my name that I will never abandon you unless you somehow betray my trust. This is the ultimate promise that I could make to you. I couldn't get out of this oath even if I wanted to. A pulse of energy shot out of him, signifying the acceptance of oath. Kagaya, hearing this, returned Naruto's hug with as much power as she could gather. This was what she had wanted, she wouldn't have to feel lonely again. She had no plans to ever betray Naruto's trust in the future. 
She swore in her mind that she would do whatever she could to make sure Naruto reached his goals. She snuggled into his chest and felt his warmth. Yes, this is what she had wanted. Lucifer and Shinigami just looked at Kagaya with pity and sympathy. She wasn't the first one they had seen in their long life who was so broken and lonely. Lucifer himself had done the same to a lot of women, once, he became a devil just to spite him. But he never once deviated from his original goal of freeing Naruto. He swore to himself that he would never do that again. He would make sure that the elemental nations thrived in peace and love. Shinigami, on the other hand, swore to make the afterlife of people who did this to others more painful and difficult. Th. Duh. Thank you, Naruto-sama, said Kagaya in soft voice. Hearing this, Naruto was sure that this was the first time Kagaya had ever thanked anyone. There is no need to thank me, Kagaya. Now, it's time for you to receive my mark, said Naruto. Kagaya, hearing this, disengaged from Naruto and moved few steps back from him. Naruto mentally winced when Kagaya disengaged herself from him. He could feel his healing abilities working on cracked bones. How are you going to do this father? Are you going to do it like knights? Do you swear to blah blah blah? Like priest? Some chanting then, I give you my mark for worshipping me? Asked Lucifer in excited voice while posing as a king and god. Everyone just sweat dropped after seeing one of the satans acting as a hyperactive child. Naruto ignored him and turned towards Kagaya. Kagaya, this is the last chance to back out. Once you take my mark, I will own your mind, body and soul, after that there is no turning around. And I am very possessive of my subordinates, so I am not going to share you with anyone. Do you still want to do this? Asked Naruto. He wanted to be sure that Kagaya was totally happy with her choice and wouldn't regret it in future. Lucifer was only one who he was not possessive of, the main reason for that was Lucifer was a male. Yes, Naruto-sama, I am sure that I want to receive your mark, answered Kagaya. Suddenly, she felt immense pain in her chest and looked down to see Naruto's hand inside her body at the place where her heart should be. She coughed up a lot of blood and looked up to see Naruto looking at her with a blank face. Her pain increased to near intolerable levels and it started to feel like someone was draining her life force. Kagaya looked at Naruto one last time before passing out. Naruto looked at the passed out form of Kagaya Otsutsuki, his hand still placed in her chest. After a few minutes, he pulled his hand out while supporting Kagaya with his other hand to reveal a black tar-like substance in the form of a ball. He channeled red lightning in his hand and destroyed the ball. He looked at the passed out form of Kagaya and quickly channeled some of Kuraheim's chakra into Kaguya's wound and saw that it closed immediately. He frowned when he remembered her eyes when she thought that he had killed her. Her eyes were full of hurt, betrayal, and a small amount of acceptance, but the anger and rage that should have accompanied the betrayal were missing. His musings were cut short when he heard a groan and looked down to see Kagaya starting to wake up. She opened her beautiful silver eyes and looked around. Her eyes were full of confusion and when they met his they widened. She looked down to see her wound missing. She slowly got away from his support and looked at Lucifer and Shinigami to see them looking at her with small smiles. Why did you stab me with your hand, Naruto-sama? I thought I was going to die, asked Kagaya. It was to place my mark, Kagaya. I have to place it on the receiver's heart. I didn't warn you beforehand because you would have surely freaked out, answered Naruto. Mentally, Kagaya agreed with his reasoning, but she still remembered his blank face looking at her. She never wanted to see him looking at her like that again. How are you feeling Kagaya? Asked Naruto. I am feeling good. Actually, I feel better than ever. My mind is working better than ever and it feels like a weight that I never knew was there in first place has been lifted from my shoulders, answered Kagaya. I removed the part Shinju had left inside you to influence you. With it gone, you should be able to use your chakra easily, replied Naruto. Kagaya, hearing this, nodded her head. All of them turned and started to return to throne room. Naruto-sama, if you don't mind me asking, what is that sword? It's too powerful to be a simple weapon. You also used red lightning and black ice in our fight. I have never seen anything like them before, said Kagaya. Naruto looked at the Kagaya for a few seconds before answering. I don't know the origin of the sword, but it was the sword by which I was stabbed before I was sealed and given to my betrayers by Shinju. The sword was already soaked in the blood of Shinju and some other powerful gods before I was stabbed. It was the reason that I didn't heal immediately after getting stabbed. 
After getting stabbed and having most of my power sealed, it took me more than two centuries to become conscious again. All the while sword kept absorbing my extra energy and became what it is today. I haven't found any special ability of the sword yet, but I am sure it has one. As for red lightning, it reduces whatever it touches to basic energy. If the target is above a certain power level, however, it harms them at an exponential rate as long as they are touching it. The user can also use it to absorb the energy of attacks or a person, but it's extremely hard to manipulate and use for a long period of time. Black Ice has the ability to flash freeze anything it touches, be it energy or a person. Targets above a certain level can defreeze themselves, but it still causes a lot of pain, explained Naruto. He suddenly put his hands on the head and groaned. He started to mutter something that sounded like, idiot clones, after he recovered from his headache, he turned towards Shinigami and said, I am going to the elemental nations to set my plans in motion. When I return, I want you to be done with the second task. Otherwise you will feel my wrath. After hearing this Shinigami quickly returned to his realm after bidding them goodbye. Haim Sama, do you want to accompany a lowly god and his subordinate to the elemental nations? Asked Naruto in a respectful voice. Naruto, realizing what had happened, glared at the snickering Lucifer and didn't turn towards Kagaya, too embarrassed to say anything. He discreetly wiped his nose. He could hear Kurahime's laughter inside his mindscape and could visualize her laughing her ass off while caressing her tails. He shook his head and cursed in his mind for getting so easily caught in Kaguya's trap. But who could blame him? He still remembered this morning's accident after all. He took a deep breath and got his emotions under control and then opened a portal to the elemental nations. He passed through it followed by a hooded Lucifer and smirking Kagaya. After the talk with Cages, Kagaya followed Naruto through the portal to emerge at a makeshift hospital. She was confused when she saw herself in a hospital room instead of a throne room. She turned towards Naruto to see him opening one of the doors on her left side. She quickly followed him into the room and found herself looking at four familiar faces. Three of them were unconscious on beds at the end of the room while the pink-haired, flat-chested girl was glaring at her and Naruto. Naruto Baka, what are you doing here, and what are you doing with Kagaya? screeched Sakura. Both Kagaya and Naruto sweat dropped, did she forget what happened yesterday? This was the common thought in both of their minds. Naruto realized that Sakura had returned to her fangirl mentality in a single day. Naruto decided that she was not important at the moment and had no intention of talking with her, he quite vividly remembered her beating his earlier self to a pulp when she felt like it. He moved towards Sasuke knowing Kagaya would handle Sakura. Sakura, seeing that they were not going to say anything, prepared to fight against them. She hoped she could prevent them from doing any harm until the cages returned. When she saw Naruto moving towards Sasuke, she quickly jumped towards him planning to send him out of the hospital with a single punch. However, she was stopped by Kagaya, who appeared between her and Naruto and absorbed her chakra that she was planning on releasing with the punch. Seeing her chakra getting absorbed, Sakura jumped backwards and attacked Kagaya. Kagaya, seeing the chakra-enhanced punch heading towards her, caught it and once again absorbed the chakra, making the punch quite weak due to Sakura's lack of physical strength. Suddenly both of them felt a flare of chakra where Naruto and Sasuke were. Sakura turned towards Sasuke in worry, ignoring Kagaya for the moment. Kagaya, seeing the opportunity, quickly knocked her out with a chop on her neck. Naruto, seeing Kagaya stopping Sakura's punch, looked back at Sasuke's unconscious body. He placed his hand on Sasuke's chest and tried to synchronize both of their chakras. Shinigami's whole plan depended on whether or not he could synchronize both of their chakra. Flashback. Naruto-sama, one of your main jobs is to make sure that no mortal or immortal who has not been allowed by a primordial goes to the other dimension. No mortal has enough power to breach the dimensional gap, but some of them have abilities that could open a small hole in the dimensional barrier, said Shinigami. Get to the point, Shinigami. I want to sleep for a while, ordered Naruto. Of course. Naruto-sama. What I want to say is that Mangekyo Sharingan or Rinnegan has the power to open a small hole in the dimensional gap via the elemental nations. Usually, this wouldn't be a problem, but Red is now living in the dimensional gap. If he sees a dimensional hole, he will be able to easily open it enough to enter the elemental nations, explained Shinigami. Yes, I can see how that would be a problem. What is the strength of Shinju's barrier over the elemental nations? asked Naruto. 
The barrier is on almost full strength, Naruto-sama. The only way for someone to enter it is to get your mark or Shinju's mark. However, if someone opens even a small hole in it from inside, then it's breachable for as long as the hole is there, said Shinigami. Naruto nodded his head. What is the condition of my barrier? Air. Your barrier does not exist anymore, Naruto-sama, answered Lucifer. Suddenly an immense pressure fell on both Lucifer and Shinigami and they both started sweating. It reminded them that even if he was weakened, Naruto was still a primordial god. What do you mean it does not exist? asked Naruto through gritted teeth. It was destroyed about a century into your ceiling. Barrier requires the continuous energy of a primordial, and you were sealed. In a century, it weakened, and then Ophis destroyed it to make the dimensional gap its new home, answered Shinigami. Then why is Shinju's barrier at almost full strength? shouted Naruto. He was pissed that Ophis dared to destroy his barrier. Naruto-sama, both barriers were different. His barrier recharges itself with nature chakra, while your barrier recharges itself by directly using your energy, answered Shinigami. Naruto took a deep breath to calm himself. Getting angry wouldn't help solve the matter at hand. Very well, I will see to it tomorrow that all Sharingans in the elemental nations are destroyed, said Naruto. Naruto-sama, it is also a golden opportunity for a power-up. Sasuke Uchiha received half of Hagoromo's Rakudo Senjutsu while he already had his Yin Chakra due to him being Indra's transmigrant. You receive the other half and have his Yang Chakra. Theoretically, if you manage to synchronize your chakra with his, then it would be a battle of wills between both of you if tried to extract the other half of Rakudo's Senjutsu and his Yin Chakra. I don't think Uchiha's will is strong enough to stop you from extracting the other half of Hagoromo's power, said Shinigami. And if I get Hagoromo's yin and yang chakra, I should get Rinnegan, and by getting the other half of Hagoromo's senjutsu, my senjutsu would also become stronger, finished Naruto with a smirk. It was a very weird scene to see both Naruto and Shinigami smirking. You have made me very happy, Shin-chan. If all goes to plan, then I will release you from your oath. Just make sure that Sasuke, Kakashi, and Obito remain unconscious. I don't want to go hunting for them, said Naruto. It will be done and thank you, Naruto-sama, said Shinigami. Flashback ends. Synchronizing his chakra with Sasuke's was proving to be a very hard task even with Kurohime's help. After a few minutes, Naruto suddenly felt his chakra start interacting with Sasuke's chakra. He quickly willed all of the chakra to move inside himself. If everything went according to plan, Sasuke would remain alive with a large chakra reserves but without Sharingan and Rinnegan. This would also end the continuous feud between Asura and Indra Otsutsuki by ending their transmigration. Usually, he wouldn't have done this to Sasuke, but he knew that Sasuke was not very mentally stable. Who knows what Sasuke would have done when it finally settled in his mind that the Dobi had become a god. With Red living in the dimensional gap, Naruto couldn't take the risk. Slowly but surely, all of Hagoromo's senjutsu and chakra started to enter Naruto's body. He was surprised to find a lot of Hagoromo's yang chakra in Sasuke's body, but he absorbed it too. Looks like Madra wasn't the only Uchiha who transplanted Hashirama's cells. There was a flare of chakra when he absorbed all of the chakra. He could feel itching in his eyes but they didn't change. Suddenly, there was another flare of chakra and Hagoromo materialized in all his glory. Kagaya, seeing her son, tensed and prepared for a fight. Naruto, on the other hand, just turned towards the sage of the six paths. How and why are you here, Hagoromo? asked Naruto. When my yin chakra met with my yang chakra, I was able to summon myself here. I am here to ask, why did you not seal my mother? asked Hagoromo with a frowning. You should know why. Your mother was manipulated by Shinju and thus I didn't see any reason to seal or kill her. It's obvious that she is not going to do that in the future, answered Naruto. Kagaya was a bit surprised to see her son here, but she was also angry at him for not seeing that she had been influenced by Shinju. They had lived together, and he was still unable to understand that she was not in control of her own actions. Seeing him here, saying that she should be sealed despite her own helplessness, was painful. Seeing Naruto defend her was a pleasant surprise though, and it decreased her pain. I know that she was manipulated, but who is to say she wouldn't do the same thing in the future? Her power is too much for her, and it would be better for everyone if she was sealed, said Hagoromo. 
I have made sure that she won't do anything like that in future. Don't think yourself to be a god, Hagoromo. The shinobi calling you god doesn't grant you divinity, and it's not in your power to decide what should be done to a person. You yourself are creator of a lot of problems, don't make me remind you of your failures as a son, father, and ancestor, hissed Naruto. Hagoromo recoiled as if struck. He remained silent for a long time then looked at both Naruto and Kagaya before giving them a small smile. I guess you are right. It's not my place to tell everyone what is right and wrong. I will place my trust in you, Naruto. Said Hagoromo, his voice cracking. Naruto could see tears building in Sage's eye. I just want to ask one more question before my time here is up. What are your plans for bringing peace to the elemental nations? Asked Hagoromo. He wiped a tear from his eye that had spilled when he was reminiscing about old times with Kagaya. My plan for peace is very simple. The first phase of my plan is to force the villages to stop warring, then give them a common enemy who is too strong for them to defeat. This phase is already complete, and they know that by going against me they will be annihilated. The second phase of my plan is to promote trade and travel between villages and decrease overall shinobi numbers. The third and final phase of my plan will start when all the villages are in an alliance with each other and without armies. I will slowly remove the restrictions placed on them but keep reminding them to not go back to their old ways. This is a very flexible plan, and any obstacle could easily be overcome by flexing or changing the plan a bit. I also have a plan to create a capital city where people from every village slowly settle. Once they realize that there is no need for war anymore, they will automatically accept peace. Lucifer will also make some changes to the plan, and I have total faith in his abilities to maintain peace here, explained Naruto. So, your basic plan is to stop wars immediately using fear, then slowly ease them into a peaceful lifestyle over decades. Then, once they have fully integrated peace into their lifestyle, you will remove the restrictions while still removing anti-peace elements, said Hagoromo. Yes, this is the basic plan, agreed Naruto. This plan is a mixture of both my son's plans for peace. Peace by power and understanding. Good luck with the plan, said Hagoromo. Now, I don't think there is any more need of my chakra in this world, so I will be taking it back. Naruto, hearing this, raised an eyebrow and asked, Do you think you can take your chakra back from me? No, I am not foolish enough to get in battle of wills with you, but I hope and pray that you will use it carefully and for peaceful purpose. No, I meant I will take my chakra back from them, said Hagoromo while pointing at Obito and Kakashi. Why do you want to take chakra from them? You misunderstood me, I am not going to take all the chakra from them, just my yin chakra. My yin chakra is responsible for awakening of Sharingan in Uchiha, you have already taken it from Sasuke, Sharingan bloodline will end with me taking it back from other two. It will also end any chances of anyone awakening Rinnegan in future. There is no need of Rinnegan in a world of peace. Answered Hagoromo. Naruto nodded his head but didn't say anything, after all Hagoromo was making his work easier. Hagoromo floated towards both Obito and Kakashi. He placed his hand above Kakashi's left eye while placed his other hand on Obito's chest. In a matter of seconds he extracted his yin chakra from Kakashi's Sharingan and did the same with Obito's body. He turned towards Kagaya and bowed his head and apologized. I am sorry that I never found out that you were being influenced, Ka-san. I hope you will forgive me someday. With that he faded away. Kagaya didn't give a reaction that would give away whether she heard it or not. Naruto, seeing that his work was done, opened a portal back to his throne room. Kagaya, let's go. I have had enough fun for today, said Naruto. Kagaya quickly followed Naruto through the portal. When Naruto emerged from the portal he was surprised to see Shinigami already there waiting for him. Seeing him, Shinigami bowed and said, Air. My reapers have finished sorting through the souls, Naruto-sama. As you know, due to the condition of my pantheon, I was having a hard time maintaining the souls. Before Naruto could say anything he was interrupted by Kagaya. What happened to your pantheon? It was Naruto who answered her question. The gods and goddesses of his pantheon were injured by Shinju the day before I was sealed. No, they haven't recovered yet due to some circumstances, but now that Shinju is trapped without any way to influence the outside world, they should recover very soon. Now, get to the point Shin-chan, did you find a soul that could help me in my situation or not? Naruto-sama, most of the souls who died more than 25 years ago have been forced to join the livestream, 
and the only soul that suited your requirements belongs to your mother, answered Shinigami. Mother? asked both Naruto and Kagaya. I mean Kashina Uzumaki, said Shinigami. Kurahime, who was also watching everything, added in Naruto's mind. Yes, Kashina was one of the best seal masters to have ever lived. She even helped Minato in creating the Hiroshin formula and she would do anything to help you. She was obb obsessed with you, even before you were born. Naruto wanted to point out that he was born before the elemental nations was even inhabited, but decided that it wasn't worth it. The whole soul business was too much hassle to even talk about. Excellent. I knew I could rely on you to do the job, Shin-chan. Start the ritual, said Naruto. Shinigami just laughed nervously and said, Air, her soul is missing, Naruto-sama. What? Speak clearly Shin-chan. Eehehe. Her soul is missing. My reapers never found her soul, Naruto-sama, said Shinigami while laughing nervously, clearly expecting an explosion. He was surprised when Naruto just nodded his head like it confirmed something and closed his eyes. Mindscape Naruto appeared in his mindscape and moved towards one of the farthest doors that was present. Kurihime, seeing Naruto going somewhere in his mindscape, decided to follow him. After walking through doors and passing through a lot of twists and turns, they reached in front of another door. This door was different from the other doors. Unlike all other doors, which were of a black color, this door was red and had a lot of seals with cracks on them. Naruto slowly opened the door with great care so as not to create any sound. When the door was half opened, both he and Kurihime tiptoed inside the room. They were surprised to see a large room with a huge bed on one end, but their eyes widened even more when they turned to see other side of the room. Why did he close his eyes? I was enjoying it so much and from the looks of it Shinigami-sama was going to get a beating because of me. Eehehehe. Both Naruto and Kurihime sweat dropped after hearing this. Naruto decided to make his presence known by clearing his throat. Kashina's head whipped towards the direction of the sound and her face started to resemble a tomato when she realized she was busted. Seeing that they were not going to say anything, she just shouted the first thing that came to her mind. I just wanted to see your life, databane. The end. I hope you enjoyed this episode. Remember to subscribe and like this video. See you in the next video.